it is time for the Torian Grey. So back when I did my first video on this channel, my massively long um, bookshelf tour and 2023 20, TBR, I promised a Dorian Gray tour because this is my pride and joy, my Dorian Gray collection, and I would love to share it with you. So if you couldn't tell, um, The Picture Dorian Gray is my all-time favorite book. Hey, popping back in real quick because as I was editing, I realized I didn't explain like a summary of Dorian Gray or give some historical context for those who aren't aware of it. So The Picture of Dorian Gray is about a young man, Dorian Gray, who is getting his portrait painted by a friend of his, Basil Hallward. And on the day he gets his painting finished, another of Basil's friends uh, Lord Henry is there and Dorian and Henry start talking to one another and during this chat um, Dorian kind of realizes that his youth and his beauty are fleeting because the boy is 19 years old he's never thought about this in his life <laughs> so when the painting gets finished he kind of becomes jealous of it not in a really serious way but kind of like a dramatic <laughs> you know 19 year old way and he just kind of wishes, oh, I wish this painting will age instead of me. And I think a common misconception, or at least like a way to describe it, is that he sells his soul, which he does, but it's not like an official thing. He just like says this out loud and then it happens somehow. <laughs> because instead of just the painting aging, it also takes on like the physical deterioration of his morality because uh the victorians kind of had this idea that someone's moral goodness equated to their beauty and of course their idea of beauty was white blonde hair blue eyes which is exactly what Dorian looks like. So throughout the book, Dorian just becomes a worse and worse person while he physically just looks 19 years old and beautiful. So the whole book is like a critique of that idea, essentially. And throughout the video, I reference uh, different versions of this novel. So there's kind of three versions of it. So there's the manuscript, which was heavily edited before it was published. Um, to remove a lot of the homoerotic subtext. And then in 1890, it was published in Luca Cott's magazine, I believe alongside A Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the first uh, Sherlock Holmes novel. Although I'm not remembering exactly, they could have been in like different publications, but they were still in the same like magazine initially. And then in 1891, it was edited to remove even more of the homoerotic subtext and five chapters were added to it, which expanded the kind of Sybil Vane subplot. And Sybil Vane is the woman who Dorian first falls in love with, and then uh, the ensuing fallout. <laughs> so yeah, it's really interesting to think that it went through two rounds of editing to remove some of the homosexuality, but like it's still incredibly gay. <laughs> okay, back to the video. A bit of my history with it. I read it when I was 17 in my uh, 11th grade English class, which was basically a uh, AP English um, preparatory class. Uh, one of our first assignments of the year was to pick a book from the list of top 100 commonly tested books on the AP English exam and just read it on our own, write a little essay about it. And I was going through the list and I saw Dorian Gray on it. <laughs> and the reason I was drawn to it was because the year before in my 10th grade English class, we did a gothic literature unit. And again, we had to pick a book to read on our own. And I had showed a cousin of mine the list and she's an English teacher. She recommended Dorian Gray, but at the time I didn't pick that book. We didn't have to stay with books on the list. I picked some contemporary YA gothic book that was like not good <laughs> honestly but when I saw Dorian Gray on the AP book list I thought okay I'll give it a shot this time and like with 
most of my experience in school, I procrastinated until the last possible moment to read the book. And I read it while my family and I were on a little vacation to uh, Ocean City, Maryland, I believe it was. We had an exchange student with us that year from Chile, and so we were taking her to the beach even though it was October, so we weren't like beaching it up but we still wanted to go and see the ocean. And so I read it during our drive and while we were at the hotel and stuff, and I devoured it in two days. And this was the first like classic novel that I genuinely enjoyed. Like, yes, I had to read it for a class, but up until that point, all of the books that I did have to read for class, that, like classical books, I was kind of lukewarm on, or I just downright didn't like them. <laughs> but I just absolutely fell in love with The Picture Dorian Gray. For me, it's the language, um, Oscar Wilde's imagery and his just use of words in general, I think is so fantastic and it's really inspired my own writing. And I actually coincidentally, entirely coincidentally, finished the book on October 16th, which is Oscar Wilde's birthday. So yeah, after I read that and bought my first actual physical copy, I I just couldn't stop buying them and now whenever I go to a new bookstore I always check to see if they have one that I don't have. So I'm just gonna show all of my editions. Um, I'm gonna kind of... I do remember where I've gotten most of these I believe so I'm going to kind of go from I don't know least interesting finds to most interesting and then kind of showcase my other Oscar Wilde related books as well. So let's get into it. We're gonna start with the editions that I just got at the kind of typical chain bookstores, uh, Barnes and Noble and Books A Million most often for me. So we have the Penguin Classics edition, uh, Iconic, Everyone Loves Penguin Classics, The Black Spine. Uh, these are actually some of my most recent ones. So we have this very simplistic uh, signature classics edition. I think I got this at Barnes and Noble. These two are also from Barnes and Noble. We have another signature classics, this kind of silhouette, and another signature classics. This is I love this cover because it reminds me of Crowley from Good Omens. And I have this giant edition that's like it is this exact cover basically <laughs> um but it's huge it has some of his other works in it this is uh from fall river i got this in the bargain section at books a million all of these editions i also got from books a million so this is sweetwater press and i really love this cover um i love the colors a lot another sweetwater press uh hardcover edition again I love the purple. Purple's my favorite color, so I love when Dorian Gray editions have purple incorporated. I also have this really interesting cloth bound with a little like elastic strap. Um, this is from Race Point Publishing, uh, from Barn uh, Books a Million. Sorry. <laughs> then I've seen these word cloud classics all over the place. Um, honestly, I'm not in love with them. <laughs> they feel a little too graphic design is my passion-y for me, um, but I do appreciate the inside. Look at that. That is beautiful. <laughs> so, you know, I guess you can't judge a book by its cover, literally. And then I have this uh, Barnes & Noble paperback classic edition, and this was, I think, the first- one of the first ones I purchased because it's the one that I've annotated the most. You can, can you see that? Yeah. This uh, particular copy is one that I've kind of annotated the most. I just, every single time I read and reread this book, I find more things that just jump out at me that never really did before, or maybe I'd forgotten about. Um, the reread value that this book has for me is immense. I think I've read it at least 13 times. <laughs> okay, next up, I'm gonna show you the ones that I got from sort of local and or used bookstores. 
So this one is one of my favorite covers. I love the watercolory style of it, but this is a Signet Classics edition. I got this at the bookstore where, um, I didn't work at the bookstore, but I worked in the place where the bookstore was. It's, co it's complicated to explain. I didn't work at the bookstore, but basically this is from where I worked over the summer. This uh, Harper Perennial edition, I think these came out in maybe 2018-ish, but they were doing these kind of limited illustrated runs of various classics. I got this at a local bookstore and I have never found a copy of Dorian Gray before or since this edition at that bookstore and it's the one closest to me and I'm very disappointed in them, honestly. And then I got this Dover Thrift edition at a local-ish bookstore. So these ones are from used bookstores. Uh, I love I love finding Dorian Gray's in used bookstores because of course you get kind of older editions that aren't being printed anymore. So I have this Signet Classics edition. I'm pretty sure this guy on the cover is supposed to be Lord Henry and not Dorian himself, which choices, it's a decision. <laughs> um, but I took this uh, particular copy when I went to uh, Costa Rica on a high school trip and I read it, I think three times while I was there. <laughs> Next we have this Nightmare Fuel cover. <laughs> Um, I think this is another Signet Classics edition, and there, these two Signet Classics, hold on, compared to this one, like, what is going on? They, they really stepped up their game with, I'm assuming this is their most recent one, but, yeah, <laughs> this is a choice as well. So this is another uh, Penguin Classics, kind of an older version. Got the black spine and this kind of larger hardcover with this guy on it who honestly, they could have gotten a better person or a better drawing in my opinion. This is a Wordsworth Classic and it's from 1994. Okay, now we're getting into the editions that have a bit more of a story to them. So when I was 18, my parents and I went to New York City to celebrate my 18th birthday. And the primary reason was because I was seeing Hamilton that night, which was very fun. But I was allowed to pick what we did for, you know, the rest of the day. And my primary thing that I wanted to do was to go to independent bookstores and find Dorian Gray's. <laughs> and it's also where I got my Dorian Gray shirt, but I found these six editions at various bookstores throughout the city. This is an Enriched Classics edition. I'm not super in love with the cover design, but you know, it works. And then I love these little tiny, this is um, Macmillan Collector's Library edition. They have this like gold foiling on the edges and little ribbon bookmarks and they're just they're so small this is my smallest one and it's so cute um i love it a lot <laughs> the spine is very pretty as well the blue and the gold Ooh, have bantam classics with you know just mr wild himself on the cover we have another mr wild <laughs> um, edition this is a norton classics love norton they have essays in the back that i actually haven't read but this edition has the 1891 version and the 1890 version and then a bunch of scholarly essays that eventually I'll get around to reading. And then we have this very dramatic modern library uh, cover. It's like this illustration. There's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like rain. It's so dramatic. <laughs> and then I really love the simplicity of this one. This is a vintage. This is vintage classics uh division of random house but yeah i just love the simplicity of this cover next up we have my editions that were gifts from friends of mine because you know it's very easy to get a gift for me it just has to be dorian gray themed and i'm happy <laughs> so we have this one my friend who gave it to me was kind of apologetic because it's kind of blurry like you can tell it's not the best 
quality edition, but I was like, no, that's hilarious. I love it. This, this is who published, who is the publisher for this one? There is no publication information. I have no idea where my friend found this copy. <laughs> so yeah, mystery edition, love that. <laughs> Um, this was a gift from a friend. I think this is another like kind of Books A Million special edition. It does say 1890 on it, but this is the 1891 version. <laughs> and it has the, oh gosh, I forget what they're called, but the like uneven edges, which I personally don't mind. I know a lot of people have opinions about that, but I think it's a cool look. And then we have this, the Barnes and Noble kind of soft cover um purple and gold which is beautiful so this one i did buy one of these for myself but this particular one came from some friends whose wedding i wasn't able to go to but my parents did and they had decorated with like books was kind of their theme and they gave this to my parents to bring back for me and so i gave the copy that i had bought for myself to a friend <laughs> And this technically wasn't a gift, um, but it's another Signet Classics, and it's crooked. The printing is crooked, and this particular copy was from when we actually did end up uh, studying Dorian Gray in my 12th grade AP English class. And my teacher that year didn't keep track of who had what book because it is numbered. I'm not showing you where I went to school, but it is numbered. <laughs> so my friend had this one with the crooked printing and she didn't like that so I offered to trade and then I decided to keep it because like I said my teacher didn't keep track of who had which book, who was returning the books, whether they were returned at all. So I was like you know what this is mine now and that teacher kind of deserved um me keeping this in all honesty. I'm not gonna say why but he did. And then these two editions. So first of all we'll go with this Wordsworth classic which I'll take the post-it note off but apparently Wordsworth classics have a kind of reputation for having sort of silly low budget covers so there's that. It's like unnecessarily sexy <laughs> um, which is really funny. But when I was first getting really into Dorian Gray, I had seen this edition online. This is from Pulp to Classics. So it's obviously like taking inspiration from sort of pulp uh, movie posters or book covers. And I thought it was so funny because that, this is one of the Ryans. I don't know if it's Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling. Honestly, they look alike to me. They look identical. To me but it's one of the ryan's like for sure <laughs> um it says a hey what does it say hey girl i'd sell my soul for you and like we got puns on the back it's just delightful and i had seen this online and i was saying to my friends because this is what i would talk about with my friends i was like i want this book i want this edition so badly so my friend who i was going to prom with that year uh, found this copy. He couldn't find this one, but he found this one and wrote, Hey girl, you should come with me to page 63. So if we go to page 63, he did write, don't worry, it's an erasable highlighter, but I'm actually, it's faded. So I'm gonna go over it again at some point, but he did highlight the letters for uh, prom. So P-R-O-M. You really can't see very well, but they're there and it was very sweet and i of course said yes because we had already agreed that we were going to go together <laughs> but yeah so this one is very special to me and then later i found this copy at a books a million in the bargain section and a friend of mine that i was with that day bought it for me wrote a nice little note on the inside cover which i'm keeping for myself yeah, this is one of my favorite ones because I just, it's so funny to me. <laughs> Next up, we have my editions that I've got from the different countries I went to, which is just uh, Italy and France. I, like I said, I have been to Costa Rica, but that was a high school trip. So we were kind of, you know, we weren't really allowed to go do whatever we wanted. So if I could have gone to a bookstore there, I would have 
found a Spanish version of Dorian Gray if they had it. But that is a goal of mine. Wherever I travel to, I want to find, you know, what Dorian Grays they have there. So my first ones were when I went to Paris in 2018 with my cousin. Uh, it was my high school graduation gift from like my entire family. <laughs> but we went to the Shakespeare and Company, a bookstore. So I've got this uh, Penguin Classics edition. I really love the style, the kind of sketchy, simplistic kind of style of this. And the Penguin Cloth Bound edition with the peacock feathers, which is just so beautiful. Again, this is probably one of my favorites <laughs> that I own. And we have the Shakespeare and Company seals in both of them. And then also in Paris, they have little kind of stalls all along the Seine called Bouquinistes, I believe is how you pronounce it, <laughs> to the best of my ability. And they started, you know, however many years ago, <laughs> um, selling just books and probably like newspapers and magazines and stuff like that. But now they also sell like little trinkets and souvenirs and stuff, but a lot of them still do sell used books. So I found a French Dorian Gray at one of those. It's kind of interesting because the spine is like upside down, which seemed to be common in France, which is kind of weird to look at, but it is very interesting. And yeah, there we have all the French on the back, which I cannot speak, <laughs> but I love that I have one. And then just last year, I went to Italy for a school trip and I found this <laughs> very kind of sexy Dorian Gray cover with like the hand and a very clearly like nude figure. Um, this is this is an English copy. I found it in an English bookstore, but again, purple, love the purple. And I had a really wonderful chat with the bookseller about how much I love this book and Oscar Wilde in general. <laughs> and then I was looking for an Italian copy of Dorian Gray. And I happened to see a kind of stall, a book stall. <laughs> and we were waiting for some people to come out of the museum that we were in, some of the other students. And I said, hey, I'm running across the street super quick. I'm gonna try to find this book. And so I was rifling through the books. They were kind of like lined up like they would be in a record store. So I was like flipping through the books and there was no clear organization. So I was really just guessing. I didn't have a lot of time to spend looking through all of these books, but I finally, I found one. Like I get the clock because of the whole kind of living forever thing but it definitely is an interesting choice <laughs> at the same time. And I still have all of my like tickets and stuff in here that we went to. And then most recently I went with some family members to Bordeaux, France, and I didn't really feel the need to find another French copy of Dorian Gray, but I did want to try to find some other European type edition. So I found this penguin one with the peacock feathers to kind of match the cloth bound and it's very pretty. It has the kind of colored lines on the spine. Okay, finally, the last three. So I saved these ones for last because they are kind of my most interesting in this one. They kind of go together, but this copy is my oldest. Um, I found this in a used bookstore and it is from 1931 and it's illustrated and has you know this person's name from 1933 yeah there's the page that says 1931 yeah i assume there used to be a dust jacket on this but there isn't it was also like published in the midst of the great depression so fascinating and there is a bit of kind of gold foiling on the top and finally we have this edition which i did have to purchase online i try not to purchase copies online because it's more fun for me to find them out in the wild but this is the uncensored picture dorian gray this is a kind of reprinting of the original manuscript this is from uh harvard university press so yeah, got the nice little shirtless man on the cover. That's how you can tell it's uncensored. And 
my pride and joy. This is from SP Books, uh, based in Paris, and they make replicas of manuscripts, classic original manuscripts. <laughs> so this is their edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray, which they started in 2018. Um, and just look at this. Look at this. It's beautiful. It's massive. It's surprisingly light. So you take it out of the box and there you have Oscar Wilde's signature again on the back. That's what the front looks like. And they only do a thousand prints of each one. It might be, it might vary um, depending on the book, but for this one they only are doing a thousand different prints of it. So I have the 620th it came with this little kind of certificate type thing to show that. It has a foreword by Merlin Holland, who is, I believe, Oscar Wilde's grandson or great-grandson or something along those lines. And it is simply stunning. Like, those are his words. I know this isn't the literal manuscript, but like, that's his handwriting. This is the manuscript. <laughs> this is a copy of the manuscript that's housed at the Morgan Library in New York City, which is the oldest known manuscript of the picture Dorian Gray. They believe it's not the original original one because I guess there are some tells. Um, I'm not gonna get into it because it's very, you know, technical, <laughs> but they can kind of tell that it's not the original one, but it is the oldest known uh, manuscript. And it's just, I love, I love this. I've been wanting it for so long and I finally bought it for myself as a birthday gift last year with the money from my first uh, official job. <laughs> so those are all my Dorians. Um, I do technically have some other books that are like collections of Oscar Wilde's. Holy shit. I do have books that are collections of Oscar Wilde's work that include Dorian Gray. So this is one that I've been working my way through since August from Harper uh, Perennial Classics. There's also this one that I got at a Books A Million, the Oscar Wilde collection. And it's just this like bold red cover. This has Dorian Gray in it. It's from Arcturus Publishing Company. And then I found these giant <laughs> three book set um, of these like gorgeous hardcover collections of his work at a kind of secondhand rare bookstore. So we have Oscar Wilde on the sides and they're just very simplistic and pretty um, and includes Dorian Gray because it includes all of his work which is lovely and I also have these I'm not going to go through all of them but it's like his short story collections um plays poetry some like quote type books so I also have some biographies about him none of these I've actually read yet I'm hoping to get to them this year but we have Oscar Wilde The Unrepentant Years by Nicholas Frankel, Making Oscar Wilde by Michelle Mendelssohn, Oscar Wilde A Life by Matthew Sturgis, and this that I found in a used bookstore. You, can you even see that? It's Oscar Wilde's America by Mary Blanchard um, about his American tour. I also have the um, annotated prison writings of Oscar Wilde edited by Nicholas Frankel. And I've included this book up here because it is related to Dorian Gray, um, Against Nature by that person. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> um, but this is thought to be the book that inspired the yellow book in the picture Dorian Gray, which is Dorian Gray's uh, favorite book. His relationship with the yellow book is very similar to my relationship with the picture Dorian Gray. And that should tell you pretty much all you need to know. And I also got my Oscar Wilde finger puppet and this card 
with some sticker quotes. And recently a family friend gave me this. It's a little pencil. What would Oscar Wilde write? So yeah, now I get to spend the rest of my afternoon putting all of this back. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please feel free to ask me any questions about my collection. Uh, I would love to know if you guys could collect various editions of any book. What would that be? You know, whether they have various printings or not, I want to know what your equivalent to all this would be. <laughs> so let me know and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, sweet boy. Oh, hello, sweet boy. Oh, my baby boy. He's come to see the Dorians. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. I love you. I can't give you kisses because you'll get all lipsticky. But I love you so much. Hi, honey. Hello. so sweet.